Greetings to you all, Yisraya Re'ach, David Yisraya. A message that I do believe that is urgent to teach on. This message is out of the same womb, two nations, Yaakov, Esav, two people. Are they brothers? Has that state of union between those two, does Torah answer that for us, or is there a direct correlation as to the answer out of the same womb? Yaakov, Issa, yet two nations, two separate people, are they brothers? What does Torah and the Navi'in, the prophets, say on this matter? And the reason that I want to address this is that there are many kinds of, I don't want to call them teachings because they're not based upon the Torah. And everything that we teach, as Shaul says unto the Sanaikiya, that we must prove Yisraya, in essence, we must nasa. We must prove all things by Torah, what the Prophet says, and that revelation in Yoshua HaMashiach. We must prove all things, and then after we prove all things, we must hold fast to that which is excellent, that which is tough. We find in this generation of people it a constant rustling or twisting or the word nasa. They are perverting, twisting as Hefa says unto the Israelites that as he wrote in the letter unto them of the things which many cannot understand because they are things in Torah, the Prophet said, or the Navi in the Prophets, that they are hard to understand by this generation. And because we are an unlearned people, and we are constantly rustling or retching the Scripture, the Torah, we are constantly retched, wrestling with Torah. And so what I propose to you today is that... We must examine that out of the same womb, two nations, Esav, Esau, Jacob, Yaakob, two nations, two separate people, are they brothers? Does Torah answer that? Is there a preciseness with evidence in Torah as to the answer to that question? I want to begin here in Bereshit. This will be a teaching to all of you that will listen to this broadcast in whatever way that you receive it. We're hoping that you, when you hear this, you will pass it on to others. You will download it. You will pass it on to other Hebrews that they may examine this. I have no problem with any man examining what I teach. Because we must prove it according to the wisdom of Torah, the messengers of Yah, and then we must prove it whether it is right, whether Torah has the empirical evidence to back it up, or it is absolutely wrong. Let us begin to examine the question. And you hear many kinds of theses today and Doctrines, I will not call them doctrines, that there are those that are saying that Yah, as he separated Yahub and Esav, that they are no longer brothers. I'm not here to prove anything as to, uh, to battle against even the teaching of what others are teaching. We will allow Torah to answer all things. And that's why I want to begin here in Bereshit, in Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. 
And Yah said to her, He tells her that there shall be Rivicha to nations, to Goim, to nations. He said that they are in your betem, your womb, your belly. He says unto her, These are two kinds of people. They shall be separated. They shall be parats. They shall be a people that will be divided out of joints. They shall be scattered abroad. Now, that is the definitive of parat. He says they shall be separated. They shall be scattered abroad, this nation, and these nations of people. As they proceed out of your bowels, and the one people, and there shall be one of the nations that shall be stronger than the other people. And this is what he says here. He says that the elder, and we know who the elder one is. He says, Esav shall serve, he shall abad. He shall submit unto the younger one. Now, if we identify Esav as the elder one, and as we identify this nation that many identify as Esav, then tell me where is the elder one serving the younger one? Where in the makeup of this and the teaching of many, where is it where the younger one, the elderly one, is serving the younger one? If we are able to identify the nations of people, then certainly as this scripture, as many will teach that, when Yah used the word parad, two kinds of people, they shall be separated, then this identifies that there is no interaction, there is no identity between Yahob and, and Esav. We want to proceed and see what Torah teaches on this matter. We want to see what Torah says. And to understand that, we must hear the message of the prophets. Yeskel, Ezekiah. It says in the book, the writing of Ezekiah, Yah says to the Nobi, these are the words of Almighty Yah. Yah says, and I will fill his mountain with slain men. Yah says, in your hill, and in your valley, and in all of your rivers, shall they fall that are slain with the sword. Hear this, Yisra'ah. Yah says, and I will make you desolate, and your cities shall return. And you shall know that I am almighty, Yah, I am the excellent one of Yisra'ah. This is how the Edomites, or Edom, how they respond to Yah. Because this is what you, Edom, the Edomites, you have said, these two nations. Now, out of the belly of Rivika, there were two nations. The teaching says that these two nations, there is no kinsmanship between them. So between Yahob and Esav, there is no kinsmanship of uh, relation. None whatsoever. Now this is what Edom, the Edomite says, uh, of two nations. I want you to examine this carefully. I want you uh, to listen intently uh, to this teaching. I want you to write down the scriptures that I use uh, that we may examine all things, we may prove all things. Now in Bereshit 25-23, it talks about two nations are in the womb of Rivicha, two identities, two separate people, and so there is no kinsman relationship between you and your brother. Now this is the response to Yah 
unto the Edomites, unto Esav, because of their attitude toward his nation and two nations of people. It says in Ezekiah, es Yeskel, 3510, Yah identifies who he's talking to, because you, he's talking to Edom, have said, these two nations, what nations is he talking about? He's talking about the nations of Yehuda and Ephraim, the northern and the southern kingdom or tribes of the nation. There are two nations, and they have been separated even by Yah. As Yah separated this nation, these two nations out of the womb of Rivika, we want to try to drive for the answer, are they brothers? Out of the same womb. Is there anywhere in Torah where Yah says, uh, you're no more brothers. You don't even associate with Asa. He can never enjoy the beauty of Torah. Let us examine this, what Yeskel says. <clears throat> because you, Edom, because you have said, these two nations, Ezekiel 35.10, these two nations and these two countries, it calls the city of Yerushalayim and Shemaria, Shemron, the northern kingdom, the very centrality of its activities of Yah in Yerushalayim and the southern kingdom, which identified as Shemron as their capital. Yah says, the, this is what Edom says. He said, these two nations, they shall be mine. And we will possess it, whereas Yahweh was there. Yah says to Edom, Therefore, as I live, says the sovereign Yah, I will do even according to your anger, and according to your envy, which is you have used out of your hatred against them. Now didst Edom, the Edomites, identify two nations? Are they two nations or is there a nation? Out of Rivika's womb came two nations. And yet, Edom says, these two nations, uh, they shall be mine. And the two countries, they shall be mine. I shall possess them. Yah says, it is the envy because you envy them. And because of your hatred against them, he says, I will make myself known among them when I have judged you. Yah says, when I have judged the Edomites, I will make myself known among the nation of Yisrael, the nation of Ephraim, and the nation of Yehuda. I am identifying the two, or the Shanaim, this principle that many are teaching that Esa and Yaakov, Yah says that they are no more brothers. I want to examine Torah and see if there are any validity to that. Also we find here in Yeskel, in Ezekiah, here in Ezekiel, when he talks about how Yah, the whole house of Yisrael, they are represented in Torah or in this graphics here as enjoying the great bountiful riches of the blessing in the bosom of Yahshua HaMashiach during this kingdom of the great birth, the revitalization, and the life of of living Torah in their Betem. And the Nabi speaks here in Ezekiel 37, 16. It says, Yah says, and say to them, no, Yah says this, Anna. He is the one that utters, and the word Anna is what is spoken from the heart. Now Yah says, I want you to say to them, identify who is commanding this. I am Yah. He says, I am the sovereign Yah. 
He says, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations, the green, the heathens, those nations without the living substance and the power of Torah. He said, where they are gone, and I will gather them out on every side and bring them into their own land. Yah is going to do this. It's not going to be by some maturation of man. Uh, those individuals inspiring you to move to that little piece of land that they call Yisraya. And we will know that Yah from the fertile lands of uh, the great Nile unto the river Euphrates. Uh, that is the nation. That the strip of land today could not sustain uh, 50 million people or 100 million people. But on the fertile plains where Yah promised unto Abraham, Yisroch and Yahachob, it is more than enough, Yisraya. Ezekiel 37, 22. And Yah says, look what I will do. He says, and I will make them one nation. Yet in the 35th chapter of Yeskel, he talks about them being two nations. And now Yah says, I'm going to gather my people. I'm going to bring them into the fullness of the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And I shall make them Ichab. They shall be one nation, one nation in the land upon the mountain of Yisrael. He said, and there shall be one king. Yahshua shall be this Melech. And he shall be king to them all. Now, not to some. He shall be king to Ephraim. He shall be king unto uh, Yehuda. We're talking about the Shanaim, or the two, the principle of the number two, uh, that when there, there is two, then there is a separation, uh, and they're not identified as the same. These two nations, Ephraim uh, and Yehuda, are their brothers. Are their brothers. Yah says, when the fullness of the kingdom power of Yahshua fill their heart, then they shall be ekat in this kingdom knowledge of his truth. He goes on to say, and they shall be no more two nations. This is what Ezekiel 37, 22 says, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Are the kingdoms of Esau and Jacob? Are they one or are they two kingdoms? Were both kingdoms scattered abroad unto every nation? Or are they all in one nation or a few nations? Is Yisrael just in the Americas? Or are they scattered throughout the nations of the earth? We must examine principles according to Torah. Again here in Yeshua. I want to examine the two Shana'im principle. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 14. The two houses. And Yah shall be for you a mikdash, a place, a sanctuary. But he shall be a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. He talks about both houses. Now, if there are two, there is a division, isn't it? Isn't that what the number two represents? Not so. The number two exercise, uh, the most important value of it is unity. And Yah says, although you are two houses, uh, Yah says this to Yisrael. He says, I, uh, I shall be, your shoe shall be a rock of offense to both houses of Yisrael and a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Yerushalayim. Are the two houses, although they're divided and separated, are they brothers? Have they come out of the same womb? Did, they not, come, they did, did not this house come out of both houses, come out of the promises unto Avraham, Yitzchok, and Yaakov? Are they brothers? Are they enemies? Is there a divide between them? Or is there a divide between the Yaakov and Esav? Are they enemies? Let's examine what Torah says. Again in Jeremiah 31, 31. Yah says, I want you to understand Jeremiah. 
Jeremiah 31, 31. The last verse I just read was from Yeshua, Isaiah 8, 14. Let's examine this in Jeremiah 31, 31. It says, Behold, the day comes, says Yah, that I will make a Brit Hadassah, a renewed covenant, with the house of Yisrael and the house of Yehuda, two nations, two countries, two people, but are they brothers? Do they have the same father? Do they have the same spiritual father? Are they brothers? Are they walking in the light of the Torah with great wisdom and revelation? Are they kinsmen? Are they brothers? This is what he says in Jeremiah 31, 31. Yah says a day coming that I will make a covenant with who? He says with both of the houses of Yisra'ya. And although there are two houses, Yah says I shall bring that house in the kingdom or in the knowledge of Yahshua. They shall be one house and one house only and one nation. Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 17. For Almighty Yahweh of hosts that planted you has pronounced evil against you. Against who? He says, for the evil of the house of Yisrael, there's evil in the house of Yisrael. Was Yaakov, did he do something that was conniving by the subtleties of his own craftiness to persuade and seduce a Esau out of his birthright? We'll examine that. Here Yah addresses the two houses. He said there is a, an evil in the house of Yisrael, Ephraim, Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 17. And he says also in the house of Yehuda, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Now this is what the two nations have done. They have done evil, not just against Yah, but they have done evil against themselves. I ask you the question, did Yaakov do evil against his brother Esav? Did Esav do evil against his brother? We must answer this question because there are many unlearned, unstable people that are gullible, and they will buy anything that anyone says today. And they believe the deceptions of these false allegories uh, and what they call teachings to be factual. We're dealing with the number two, two nations. We began this teaching here in the book of Bereshit 25, 23. The two nations out of one womb and yet out of one promise of Dabarim, the promises of Yah unto Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, we see two nations that have developed. We see the nation of Ephraim and the nation of Yahuda. Two nations. Yah says you've done evil against each other by offering your offerings unto Baal. One offer offerings unto Jesus Christ, which is a false deity of hell, and one offer unto the God of their own deceitful bellies. And that is what is taking place today. The tenets of their Christianity they have induced that in the process of their teaching, and it is wrong. Again, we go on to identify that number two and see what Torah says. Jeremiah 33, 23. Jeremiah. It says, Moreover, the word of Yah came unto Jeremiah. This is what Yah said. This is not what I am saying. These are the words of Almighty Yahweh. He says, do you not consider not what this people have spoken? Have you considered what this people have spoken, what they have said? Saying, the two families which Yah has chosen, he chose two families or one family. Well, the Torah says there are two families. He has even cast them off. Who are the two families? The family of Ephraim and the family of Yehuda. 
You tell me that Yah has cast them off? Is that what is implying it? Well, there are those and teachings and, and these theological principles that one are developing to secure unto them proselytes that they are saying that even though scripture announce who they are and yet they are interpreting it from their own unstable unlearned logics did I read that right in Jeremiah consider you Jeremiah 33 24 did I read that right consider you not what this people have spoken, saying, the two families which Yah has chosen, He has even cast them off. This is what they are saying. Why? Because they have despised my people, that they shall be no more a nation before them. This is the mindset today, even of Esav, and even of Ephraim, and even of Yehuda, they have despised, they have na'atz, they have contempt, they have abhorred, they have hated. I want you to retain that word, na'atz, or abhor, hate, to despise, to reject, to have no association with at all. I want you to retain that because it will be vital in the process of this teaching. Out of the same womb, two nations, two people, uh, two identities. Are they brothers? Should there be any interaction between them? Let us proceed here. In Yeskel, in Ezekiah, the prophet, the Nobi of Yah. Ezekiah 23 verse 1. The Torah says the words, the Daba, the word, the truth, the very word of Yah came again to this Nobi saying, he says, son of man, he said there were two women. Now, who are these two women? Who do they represent? Now, these are vile women. These are two women. They're two nations. The daughter of one mother, Esav, and Yaakov, they had one Emma. And so are these two women. We want to identify them and see who these women are. These, this identity of the two houses. This mother, and we know that Yerushalayim is the city of our, of our nurturing. It is the city of Shalom. It is the city where Shalom is taught. So out of Yerushalayim comes uh, two women, one mother, one mother unto them, uh, comes uh, this, these two harlots. He says that, and they committed, Ezekiel 23, 3, he said, and they committed Horam in Misraim. They committed Horam in their youth. There were their breasts press that they bruised the teeth of their virginity. Who is this? Was not Ephraim and Yehuda there in Misraim? And Yah says the ability to feed and to, and to nurture the teeth were bruised. The love for Yah was bruised and abandoned. He says, and the name of them were Ahola. This is also the name of the city of Samaria, the nation, the countries. She was the elder. And Ahola Ba Yerushalayim, this adulterous wife of Yah, her sister, he said, and they were mine. And they bear sons and daughters. And these were their names. Samaria, Shomron, Shomron. He said that is a hola. And Yerushalayim is a hola. Now, the principle of two, we're dealing with that. We cannot answer anything out of our own construct as, as what we determine it should be. 
Now, yeah, I have utilized this principle of two because we're dealing with uh, that which came out of the same womb, Jacob and Esau, two people, two nations, uh, are they brothers? Should there be any interaction? Should there be any kind of uh, response one to the other? Should we segregate ourselves from uh, Esau? Knowing that Esau was scattered, just like Israel, it was scattered about woods into every nation. Is there clarity to what we're going to examine? We're going to get clarity. Here's a little more here the, by the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah. Chapter 4, verse 11. Now the Torah talks about the two olive trees. And I want to, as this Nobi gives us understanding as regarding to these two olive trees. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 11. As he speaks unto this Milech Yah, this messenger of Yah. And I said, then, I, then answered I. And I said to him, as he speaks to the excellence of Yah. What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the menorah and upon the left side? Thereof. And I answered again and said to him, What are these two olive branches which threw the two golden pipes empty golden oil out of themselves? And he answered. He answered. And said unto me, Do you not know what these are? And my answer was, No, I do not, Master. Then he says to me, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the sovereign of the whole earth. These are the ones that Yah has ordained he has ordained even the nations of Esau, Yahoo. And to fight against either one of those nations, you're fighting against Yah. That is the problem and the trouble with Esau today. He has reviled, he has spoken down, he has assaulted Yisrael. He has repudiated Yehuda. And we ought not to do that. You don't even know who Esau is. And that's a fact. No more than you can identify the true remnant of Yisrael. You cannot. Two true messengers of Yah. Revelation 11.3. Yah says that I will give power to my two witnesses. So when we look at the number two, is there a separation there, my friends? Because there is this logic today that's saying that Yah has... When he separated Esau and Jacob, there is no more kinsman relationship there at all. How can that be? When Yah even said in Debarim that the Edomites, after the fourth generation, will be allowed into the Bayat of Yah. Because they have been scattered, they have intermingled, they have, they have married, they have associated with the daughters and sons of Yisrael. They produce children. Revelation, chapter 11, verse 23. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy again 200, 202, and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Zechariah was talking about the two olive branches. Who are they? As I read in Zechariah 4, 11 through 14. Revelation Giliana answered that for the revelation of this generation. He said, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks that stand before Yah. O Made Yahweh of the Olam, the earth. Now as I give us patterns of this number two, 
in any of these instances, has any of this changed? Can we find anywhere in Torah or the prophets where any of this has changed? We cannot. To give us a, an example of even brothers that were too vitally opposed to each other, or one opposed to one, like Esau was the Yaakov, and the perfect example is here in the book of Genesis, the Revelation 4.9. When Yah came to Cain, Cain, the one that was the possessor, and he says to him, where is your brother Hebel, the one that with the breath of the riches of Yah? Where is your brother Hebel, Hebel your brother? He called him his Ah. And he says, I know not. And then he says, am I my brother's keeper? Now this man killed his brother. Now where has Esau killed Yaakov? He killed his brother, and yet Yah did not say to him, he shall not be your brother. He asked him, where is your brother? There is nowhere in Torah where that Ach of the word brother, Yah has changed that in association with Esau and Yaakov. I shall proceed to prove whether he has or whether he's not. Beginning here in the book of Genesis, Bereshit, Genesis, I want you to examine this. I want you to write these verses down. I want you to re-examine what I am teaching. Let us begin in Genesis chapter 27, verse 6. It says, And Rivika spoke to Jacob, her son, saying, I have heard your avat speak to Esav, your brother. It is a clear indication that she identified that which was in her womb to nations. And this does come after, as there are those that would, this does come after Genesis 25, 23. That there are those that are taking Genesis 25, 23, and say, this is where Yah separated them. There are no more brothers. Uh, and they will say, this is where Yah declared that they were not brothers. Well, the mother says here, in Genesis 27, 6, And Rebecca spoke unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard you about speak to Esau. She identifies him as his brother, as your ach, as your kinsman. That which came forth out of the same womb. This is how she identifies him. And she identifies him as the brother. Even, even after Yitzchok had blessed Yaakov. Genesis 27 verse 34. And when Esau heard the words of his Zavat, he cried with a great and exceedingly bitter cry and said to Zavat, his father, he said, bless me, even me also, O my Avat. And he said, your brother came with. Did he identify him as his brother? Now, if you're going to take reference of Genesis 25 uh, and verse 23 uh, and say that that is the indication that Yah separated them, and that they are no more in any kind of relationship. And yet the one that bless Jacob, he says, your brother came in. And he came in with miramah. He used the word sorote. He came in with treachery and deceit and falsehood. That's what he came with. He said, he has taken away your blessing. He has taken away the substance of the the berachaya, the blessings that Yah intended for my progenitor, my firstborn. We will find out as we proceed what took place actually. Hallelujah. So here it is uh, in Genesis 27, 34 that 
passes Genesis 25, 23, that he is still identified as the brother of Jacob. Genesis 27, 42, even after Esau threatened Jacob's life, and when Rebekah sent Jacob away, these are her words unto him. Genesis 27, 42, and these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Revika. And she sent and called Jacob her younger son. And said to him, Behold your brother. She still identifies him as his brother. Your brother Esau, as touching you, does comfort himself. And this is what he has purpose. He's going to destroy you. Because you have taken his blessing. You have, with the spirit of Mirama, your deception and falsehood, you have robbed him. You have stolen from him. And yet she identifies him as his brother. Two houses, two nations, two olive trees, two branches, two at the stake with Yahshua, Ephraim, Yehuda, but are they brothers? Are they of the family of Yisrael? Are these men still brothers? Well, we'll examine even more. I want to give her the sequence of the chronological pursuit as Esau, as he pursued Yaakov, beginning at Genesis 32.6. When he had begun to send waves of gifts on to Yaakov. When the messenger returned, Genesis, Bereshit, 32, 6. We cannot answer this question without defining what Torah says. And we must take the breath of the Torah and the prophets to find the true answer. Genesis 32, verse 6. And the messengers returned unto Yaakov, saying, We came, we entered in to your brother Esav. Now the teaching that says that Yah has annulled and denounced that as identifying them as brothers, Yah says that the older brother shall serve the younger. Who is the older brother? Are we Yisrael, should not Esau be serving us? Or do we serve Esau? Are we going to take Debarim 28? Are we going to answer the questions uh, that this false delusion of teaching uh, is going forth? I'm going to prove what Torah says. So the messengers return and call Esau, not his enemy, but his brother, and he also came to meet you, uh, with 400 men with him. He's coming for you, Yaakov, your brother. And you know the state of his mind, but yet he is still your brother. That's what Torah identifies him as. David identified his enemies. Shaul identified his enemies. Not one time have I read, you cannot find where Esav was an enemy of Yaakov. And I will show you the reason why Yah is going to wreak such havoc on Esau. Nowhere where Yah says that they are not brothers. Yaakov, as he began to cry to Yah for help, in Bereshit Genesis 32, verse 11, he says to Yah, deliver me, I pray you. Now here this man is pursuing him. And he prays to Almighty Yah to deliver him from the hand of my brother. That's what he calls him. My brother. From the hand of Esa. For I fear him. Lest he will come and smite me. And the mother with the sons. He cried unto Yah. Deliver me from my brother. A friend loveth at all time. And her brothers are born. Adversary. He cried to Yah, deliver me. How do we develop this concept 
that Yah has said to Esau, to Jacob, Esau is not your brother. How do we define this delusional teaching that say that you must hate Esau? The Torah doesn't teach that. He cried to Yah saying, deliver me from my brother, my my uh, my ak, that's what he calls him. Though we came from the same birth, from the same chamber, he said, deliver me from him. And we know the encounter with the Melach as he wrestled with the Melach in Bereshit 32.28. I'm taking us on the course of truth. When he wrestled with the Melach and he prevailed, and the Melach said, Your name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel, or Israel, or Israel. He said, For as a prince has power with Yah and with men, and has prevailed, uh, you have prevailed. He rustled, he cried. He said, Yah, this man is coming with great terror to destroy and he knew that the only way that he could be delivered was through the hand of Yah he did not identify him as his brother but as not as an enemy but he identified as him a brother now this comes after Bereshit Genesis 25 23 what the principle of this delusional teaching that many are grasping and grabbing hold to and many will defy what I say they will write they will assault me because I tell you the truth and they will buy the lies of these false teachings uh, that well no no Yah says there are no more brothers it's not in the book I will proceed further as the encounter prevailed between Esau and Jacob, Genesis, Bereshit 33.4, it says this, And Esau ran to meet Jacob, and it says he, he embraced him. He fell on his neck, he kissed him, and then he began to weep. That's what he did. He embraced him, his brother, and he began to weep. He began to cry. And in the process of that, he responds to Yaakov. Bereshit 33, verse 9. When he offered him the great abundance, Yaakov, he was enriched by Yam. And this is what Esau says to his brother. Bereshit, Genesis 33, 9. And Esau said, I have more than enough, my brother. Does he call him his brother? My brother. Keep that you have for yourself. He said, my riches are abundant and great. Because by Imuna Yitzchok, he blessed not only Jacob, but he also blessed Esau as well. And that's a fact. We will proceed. Now the response of Jacob to him, Bereshit 33.10, and then he says to him, Jacob says, No, I pray you, if now I have found favor in your sight, he said, Then receive my gifts, the presents at my hand. For therefore I have seen your face, now, this is a man talking to his enemy or his brother. He said, I've seen your face as though I've seen the face of Yah. I've seen the face of Esav as though I've seen the face of Yah. And you were pleased, and you were pleased with me. He said, take, I pray you, my blessing that is brought to you. Because Yah has dealt favorably with me. And because I have enough. And he urged him. He pressed Esau. And then he finally relented. And he took the gift. That's what he did. Now does an enemy. Give gifts. To an enemy. 
There's a reason why Esau is in the trouble that he is in. There's a reason. Jacob, he operated with the spirit of mirma, of deceit and great treachery. But does that negate that which was based in the of We will proceed and find out. There are some devilish, hellish teachings and they're false, based upon lies, unlearned, unstable, ignorant men that draw to them simple, insecure young men and women, and they buy it. And they believe that they are searching the Torah, and they will utilize a certain uh, uh, certain scripture or Torah uh, scripture, and then they will pound that and pound that with no empirical evidence. Are they brothers? The two houses, two nations, Ephraim and Yehuda, are they brothers? Can I proceed a little farther in this matter? Genesis, Bereshit, 35.1. Genesis 35.1. Now is this after Genesis 25.3 where I began? We're going to examine this concept. It is false. It is a lie, and it's going to destroy many. Now, this is what Yah commands Yahob after his encounter with Esav. This is one of the last statements that Yah said. Are they brothers? Now, Yah says this, and we will see whether the Nobi, the prophets, what they say. And the messengers. Genesis 35 1. And Almighty Yahweh said to Yaakov, Arise, and I want you to go to Beth El, the house of Yah, the place where my Ruach dwells. I want you to go to Beth El, Yah says to him. I want you to hear this, Yisraya, Genesis 35 1. He said, I want you to dwell there. He says that I want you to make there an altar unto me, unto Almighty Yah, that appeared to you, he says, when you fled from the face of Esau. Now look how Yah addresses this. He said, you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. Did Yah say or denounce their kinsmanship of the brotherhood there? Did he do that? He did not. This comes out of the mouth of Yah. Yah calls him his brother. How is it that we are sent, not we? How is it that this thesis, this false doctrine, this lie that is going forth, saying that there are no more brothers? They are brothers. They are ach. They are achim. They are brothers. Well, no one else... None of the major nobi im uh, the prophet says anything about this matter. Well, let's examine what's written in Bimit Bar Numbers. Let's see what Moshe has to say about this matter concerning Yaakov and Esav. When uh, the Yisraelites were so intimidated and they were afraid to pass through Edom, that this is Moshe. This is what he says in Bimitbar. Is this after Genesis 25, 23? Sure it is. Look at what he says. Let's examine this. Numbers Bimitbar 2014. And Moshe sent messengers from Hadash to the king of Adam. You tell me Moshe sent messengers? To the king, the Melech of Edom, to the Edomites. Look what Moshe says here. This says your brother. He calls him his brother. Moshe said, This says your brother, Israel, Israel. You know all the travail that has befallen us. Is this what Moshe says here? Is this what the messengers went to say unto the Melech of 
Adam? Or did these messengers say, You know that Yah says uh, we're not brothers? No, the Torah doesn't teach that. And one of the most major prophets defines it here. As he sent messengers and said, You know that we are your brother. And all the word has persist against us, we are still brothers. That's what he said now. There's the reason why we must understand this. We're trying to remedy things in our own way, but Yah has the remedy and the resolution for Adam. That's a fact, period. Moshe says that this is what your brother says. Numbers 2014. Is this after Genesis 25, 23? Where many will take that and say, this is where Yah says, you're no more brothers. They are wrong. They are full of deceit and lies. I shall proceed a little further. As to those that are shut out of the congregation of Yisrael, Dibarim 23, 7, I said, don't forget the word as I began this teaching, Na'atz. Those that abhor, despise, ta'ad, that spawn. Dibarim Duramidi 23.7 Yah commands us not to abhor, not to hate an Edomite. Yah says, for he is your brother. Is he the brother of Yehuda? Is he the brother of Ephraim? Sure he is. This is what Yah says. For he is your brother. You shall not hate, you shall not ta'ab, who? A Mizrai, those that are Egyptian. Because you were strangers, you were the gay. You had no inheritance right in the land. You were strangers in their land. You're not a brother of Mizrai. He did not say that you are brothers of the Egyptians, he said, you were strangers, but yet he identified uh, that Esau was your brother. He said, the children that are birth of them, even among Israel, yeah, they shall enter into the congregation of Yah in the third generation. That's what Torah says. In the third generation, they shall enter into the congregation. Now, there are those that will say, well, uh, they will utilize this in Dibarim and say, well, they are not brothers. Well, I am going to prove whether they are, whether their identity is still, uh, uh, that is one of the major threats throughout Torah, or it is your right and your perception of that matter. But Torah says, they're brothers. They're brothers. Well, they're not brothers. Well, I want to speak from one of the major, although many will say it's minor, one of the major prophets that deal with this, like no other prophet. And the prophet Obadiah, I want to deal with this. He deals with why this great destruction is going to come upon Edom. Why? Because of this offense against Yaakov. He expresses it and he explains it. As he has this Harun, this great vision from Almighty Yahweh. And as the vision began to be revealed, uh, he began to write and speak these words. And I want you to examine this along with me. We're going to take our time. I want to teach this to you, Yisraeli. There are many men that are rising up and seducing many with falsehoods and lies. The prophet Obadiah. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. I want you to re-examine these verses. I want you to hear what I am saying and re-examine the words that I use. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 1. It says that this great chazun, this vision of Obadiah, it tells us this. This says, or Amma, this is what was uttered from the voice of Almighty Yahweh. This word came out of his heart. This word came out of his mouth. This uttered the sovereign Yah concerning Edom. Now the whole vision here is about Edom. The whole emphasis is about Edom. That this is what Yah spoke on to the Nabi. I want you to grasp that. 
We have heard a rumor from here, and an ambassador is sent among the nations, the heathens. He says, Arise you, and let us rise up against her in battle. Why? Because I have made you small, Israel, among the heathen. He says, You are greatly uh, despised. You are greatly despised. As he speaks unto the very nature of Edom. I made you small among the heathens. You are greatly despised. He tells him, It is the pride of your heart that has deceived you. You dwell in the clefts of the rocks whose habitation is high. And then you say in your love, who shall bring me down to the ground? Can nobody bring me down? This is the mindset of Esau. And so Yah speaks unto the Edomites here in Obadiah 1.4. He says, though you have exalted yourself as the eagle, and though you have set your nest among the stars, Yah says, there will I bring you down. Affirmed and confirmed by Yah. Obadiah 1, 4, 1, 5. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how are you cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave you some grapes? Then Yah says, uh, Obadiah 1 6, How are the things of Esau? How are they search? How are they conceal? How are they hafas? How are they search out? How are the hidden things sought out? All the men of your confederacy have brought you even to the borders. The men that were at Shalom with you, they've deceived you, Esau. The ones that you believe that was at Shalom, he said they have deceived you. They have deceived you, and they shall prevail against you. That they eat your bread, have laid an ambush under you, there is no understanding, no discernment in him. And then this is what Yah says in Obadiah one eight. Listen, Yisrael. Listen, nation. Shall I not in that day, says Yah, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And your mighty men... O Timan, shall be in dismay to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. You see the repercussion, what Yah has prepared for the Edomites. Why? Because he tried to kill Jacob's brother? Or is the answer here? It's Obadiah, why will you destroy Esau? Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 10. He says, for your Hamas, your violent, he was violent against your brother. This is Yah talking. This is Yah still calling him his brother. This is Almighty Yahweh, he says, for the Hamas, the violence against your brother, Yaakov. Shame shall cover you, uh, and you shall be cut off forever. What was his violence? It's explained in Obadiah 1.11. Yah says, in the day that you stood on the other side, in the day, day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Yerushalayim, even 
you were as one. You were just like one of them that mocked, that downtrodden Yerushalayim. You were as one of them where you identified these as foreigners and strangers and the forces brought captive his nation, his people. He said to Esau, you were just like one of them. And then he repudiates him in verse 12. He says, you, but you should not have looked on the day of your brother. Look what he says. You should not look on the day of your brother and the day that he became a necha, a stranger with great calamity and agony befalling him with this misfortune. He said, neither. This is the major thing here. Yah says, neither should you have rejoiced over the children of Yahuda. Not only did you rejoice over the children of Ephraim, but you rejoiced over the children of Yahuda in the day of their destruction. Neither shall you have spoken proudly in the day of distress, of the great trials. Sarah, you should have not done that, Esau. You should not have spoken against them, Esau. You should have left them alone. You should have came to their aid. This is the violence that Esau has done to his brother. And Yah said, you should have looked upon them in that day and mocked them. And he also tells him in Obadiah 1.14, neither should you have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither should you have delivered up those uh, of his that did re remain in the day of distress. You should have not turned against them. You should not have given them over. You should have not uh, uh, given them to the, into the hands of the strangers uh, and helped them pursue them. You should not have done that. For the day of Yah is near, Obadiah 115. And upon all the heathens, as you have done, it shall be done to you. Your reward shall be returned upon your head. Yah says, for as you have drunk upon my, he's talking to Esau, my Kodesh mountain, so shall the heathens drink continuously. Yes, they shall drink, they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they have not been. This is the reason that Yah has this great, uh, this great reward for Esau, for the Edomites, because they should have not responded the way they did in the midst of the great afflictions of Yaakov. They should not have had responded that way. They should have came to assist and to help his brother. And Yah says, you're going to pay for that. Well, that doesn't prove anything, Re'ak. Well, I will proceed further. We're going to find out. Now, we have gone beyond Genesis 25, 23, where there is no annulling of the relationship as brothers at all. They're still brothers. That's why we cannot hate, even if you know an Edomite, you cannot hate them. Because y'all said they have every right after the third generation, their children that are birthed among you, they come into Yah's house. He means what he says. I want to ask you a question here, my friends. I want to read from Debarim 2, two chapter 2, and beginning in verse 2. The question to you, who is speaking here? Is this Yah or this Moshe? Well, let me begin here in Debarim chapter 2, verse 2. It says, And Almighty Yahweh spoke to Moshe, that this is the Abba speaking, Unto Moshe, and this is what he ama he uttered unto Moshe. He says to Moshe in Debarim two three, you have circle. I want you to hear me. Although Esau has done this, Esau has done this to Israel. Don't you respond the way he respond, because it will be woe unto you if you respond like him. That's why Yah is going to rip him to the to the smitherings of hell. So when Moshe and the company of Israel came unto the mountain of Edom, 
in great vexation and in need. This is what Yah says to them. Dibarim 2-3 He said, you have circled this mountain long and have turned northward. Why you keep walking in a circle? Why are you trying to find a remedy here? Yah says in Dibarim 2-4 he said, I want you to command the people saying, you are to pass. This is what Yah says. He says, you are to pass through the coast of your brethren, of your achim. Does it say that in your Torah? How is it that this deception of this lie that is seething in the mind of these unstable false men and these young men and women are buying these lies. This is what Torah says. Yah says, and I command you the people, Dibarim 2-4, saying, you are to pass through the coast of your brother, the children of Esau. He said, all of those that are with you, their brothers and sisters are in that house of Esau. He said, which dwell in Seir. Is that Esau? Is that his mountain? Is that the promise of his heritage and his blessings? Yah says you are to pass through. Does he call Esau the enemy of Yisrael? He calls him the brother. Esau has, Esau has committed one of the most greatest of tragedies when he saw the great uh, usurping of the strangers over the house of Yisrael. He should have stood in his defense. And he didn't. And that's where his troubles are going to uh, are going to procure unto him uh, his great reward. He calls them the brothers. He called them the children of Yisrael. Is this after Genesis twenty five twenty three? He said they dwell in Seir. He says, uh, and they shall be afraid of you. They were afraid of you, and that's the nature of Esau. He is afraid of Jacob. He said, I want you to take excellent tough heed to yourself, therefore. I want you to examine yourself. I want you to consider yourself. Why? He says, meddle not with them. For I will not give you their land. Yah was emphatic. He said, that's their land. I will not. But he gave them the land of the Moabites and the Hivites and the Hattites. He said, but that land, I will not give you their land. He said, no, not so much as a foot's breadth. Because I have given Mount Seir to Esav for his possession. He says, why you keep traversing around this? Why you keep traversing around the matter of Esav? He said, leave them alone. I will not give you that land. It's their land. Yah calls them the brothers of Israel. And Yah says to them, you shall buy, you shall buy meat of them for money that you may eat, and you shall also buy water of them for money that you may drink. For Yah your Abba, what Yah, has blessed you in all the works of your hand. He knows you're walking through the great wilderness these 40 years. Your Abba has been with you, and you like nothing. Now this is what Yah says. He said, when you go to their land, don't try to take any thing from them but buy it from them because you have much you're not in need of anything Ibarim 2 8 again Yah emphasize this why is he emphasizing that they are brothers does the Torah denounce that relationship as brothers Ibarim 2 8 and when we pass by from our brothers the children of Esau, does it call them brothers? Which dwell in Seir through the way of the plain from Elath and for Isagabah, we turn and pass by the way of the wilderness of Moab. Moshe, he identifies them. And if Yah changed that situation in Bereshit 25-23, there is no way that Moshe would have called them brothers. He would have not given them that identity, but he did. He did, Yisrael. They are brothers. I want to examine 
we always talk about Yaakov, uh, about uh, Eob, Job. Listen, what I've done here, I've gone and searched. And I have the great lineage of Esau. It is amazing that each one of those that came out of Esau, each aloof or duke, every one of his sons, every one of his daughters, I mean, every one of his sons, the wives, they came out. It is amazing that none of those names of Esau you will find whereby only a few, whereby there is any kind of indication of any kind of corrupt God worship. And I will read some of those as we proceed. I want to post this, not only that, but this is a beautiful, uh, uh, this is a beautiful covering of these that I have done. And maybe if you were right, I will send you one just like this, laminated and all, and you will have these for your records. Every name, I have researched it to the detail. Listen here, Yisra'ya, let's, let's examine this. Was Eob a friend of Yah? He was Yah's friend. Yah blessed Eob. Job, he blessed him. Now, I want to show you something here in the book of First Debari Chayayim, First Chronicles 135. I want to show you a little lineage of Esau. Esau. I want to show you that. First Chronicles 135. Please examine these verses. Please. We must be equipped to destroy this damnable, twisted, what they call teachings of truth, and their flat out lies. Let us examine this in 1 Chronicles 135. It talks about the sons of Asaph. It talks about Eliphaz. 1 Chronicles 135. Eliphaz means. Maya is fine gold. Now that's what it means. It talks about uh, Ra'uel, which means friend of Yah. Now these are the sons of Esau. I will show you as I conclude this why that they had these names or they were named this and what these names indicate. Ilafaz, uh, Maya is fine gold and Ru'el, which means friend of Yah. And also Yehush, which means he's hurried to aid. And also Yalam, the one that is concealed. And Korah, that is born. I want you to pay attention to that Eliphaz. Maya is fine gold. Eliphaz, these are the sons. And we know that in the lineage of our forefathers, the names were carry it with the consensual as to the meaning as the generations proceeded that those names were revisited. It's all through Torah. I want us to examine this in in the book of Eob, Job 4.1. Now who was this man here? Now the sons of Esau, if we examine Torah, we will see that these were men of great wisdom. They were wise men. Knowledgeable men of understanding. It says here in Eob, when Eliphaz reproved Eob, this name, well, it has nothing to do with, uh, with this Eliphaz, the sons of Asaph. Ah, we will find out. It says here, it says uh, here, Eliphaz, uh, Job 4.1, and Eliphaz, he was the, Temani, or the Temanite. Answered and said, uh, the tribe, this, that this is how he answered Job as he, be, he, he began to speak unto Job. Now, he was, uh, he was a, a, a member of the Temani, or the Temanite. Well, who were they? Who were the Temanite? I read to us First Chronicles 135. Now let us read Genesis, better sheep, 36, 11. It says that the sons of Eliphaz were Teman or Tema, Oma, Zephor, and Gatam, and Kenza. 
These were the sons of the Temanite. They were Teman. Where about the Temanite or the Tema? So was this friend of Eob? Was he a son or out of the lineage of Esau? Sure he was. Did he have the riches of the oracles of Yah? Sure he had them. Was he one that was birthed in that house with the light of the truth of the identity of Yisraya? Sure he is. That's why the, the individual will tell you that this people, they are, they, they are the ones that are the Edomites. So these are the ones that I hear from both sides. I hear from all sides. There are those that say that the Mexicans are Hebrews, and yet I hear from Mexicans say that, no, you that are the dark you skin, you're not Hebrews. We are the only ones. Same thing with Indians. So you hear from us. Same thing with what we call white men, Caucasian. Listen to this, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Here, I want to read. Here, out of the book of Parashi Genesis thirty six fifteen to give more credence unto what I read from Eob for one and first Chronicles one thirty five and also Genesis thirty six eleven. Genesis thirty six fifteen it talks about the aloof or the dukes of the sons of Asa and the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Esa, and also Timan, Timan, the Timanite, or the Taman. That's who they are. Genesis 36, 15. And who was this friend Eliphaz, the Taman? Was he out of the lineage of Esa? Or do we want to condolute that and construe that? It's easy to deceive and to bewitch the minds of the simple. We need men to tell us the truth. Well, Esau is cursed. Well, I thought that Yisraya is cursed. And the whole nation. Well, I want to read what Jau says in Ibram Hebrews 11.20. It says this. By Imuna Yitzchok, Ibrach, he blessed Yaakov and Esav concerning the things to come. Did he bless one or did he bless both? He said he blessed them both. He did not just bless one of them, but he blessed them both. That's why every son, every son of Esav, uh, the name, uh, let me, you know, you hear those that will say, well, they are cave dwellers. Uh, there's only one son. Uh, and it's in Genesis 36, 30. And it talks about the son, uh, Hori, or Hori, which means cave dwellers. Well, if we look at the son in Genesis 36, 24, it talks about Zibion, or Sibon, Sibon. It means colored. That's what it means. Who are the colored? Who have been called colored? That's what it means, colored. And there's only one that means cave dweller. And I look at the names uh, of, 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 of the tremendous emphasis in what the names imply. And it gives you a great revelation and understanding of the nature of Esau and this people. That's what it does. And only one, listen to this name. It, it is Mahetael. Mahetael. Favor of Yah. Also, uh, Mezab Chab, waters of gold. It is, and the only names, Pinon, Pion, mean darkness, uh, and also uh, Mech, Mech, Del El, Prince of Yah. The, these, this is the lineage of Esa. This is the lineage of the sons, uh, and the sons that birth sons. We don't have the ability to search things. We will listen and hear but we will not search. I want you to research what I'm teaching you tonight 
and share this with others and give this to other Hebrews and tell them to listen to it. <clears throat> the Nobi, the great messenger, Yesha, or Yesha. I want to read from that book. And I want, this is an account of Esau and Yaqub. And I want to ask you a question. Is there love expressed here or hatred? Yesha, chapter 47, verse 5. I want to begin. It says, And Yitzchok placed his hands upon all the sons of Yaqub. Before he died now, he's near death. So he placed his hands upon the sons of Yaqub and he took hold of them and he embraced them and he kissed them one by one and Yitzhak blessed them on the day. And he said to them, May Almighty Yahweh, the Almighty of your Avat, bless you and increase your sea like the stars of the heavens for numbers. May they increase me upon Israel through Yaqub, may the riches of Yah." Feel his sons and may the great blessings of Yah rest upon them. And yes, Hak also blessed the sons of Esau, saying, Same thing now. May Yahweh cause you to be dread and a terror to all that will behold you and to all your enemies. That was the blessing upon them. That's why they should have not mocked and looked upon Yisrael in the midst of their great calamities. And been a preventer. They should have, have a sense. And because they didn't. This was the great blessing poured upon them. And he goes on to say in Yesha. Chapter 47 verse 7. <clears throat> Yeshua called Jacob and his sons. And they came and they sat before Yeshua. And Yeshua said to Jacob. Yah the almighty of the whole earth. Said to me. To your seed. Will I give the land of an inheritance. Now what land? If your children keep my statutes and my ways. And I will perform to them the oath which I swear to your father, Abraham. Now therefore, my son, teach your children and your children's children to fear Yah. See, that's what we must be taught. This is generation, it doesn't fear Yah. He said, and go in the tough way which will please Almighty Yahweh, your Almighty. For if you keep the ways of Yah and his statutes, Yahweh will keep to you his covenant with Abraham and will do well with you and your seed all the days. Now when he had finished commanding Yaakov and his children, he died. He gave up the Ruach and he died and was gathered to his people. Now look at what happened in Yesha 47.10 And Yarko and Esau fell upon the face of their father, Yeshua. And they were. Yeshua was 180 years old when he died in the land of Cana in Hebron. And his sons carried him to the cave of Mishpelech which Avraham had bought for the children of Heath for possession for a burial place. I want you to listen intently. And all the kings of the land of Canaan went out with Jacob and Esau, and they buried Yitzhak. And the kings of Canaan showed Yitzhak great honor in his death. That's what they did. And the sons of Jacob and the sons of Esau, they went barefooted, round about, walking and lamenting until they reached Kerith Arba. Jacob and Esau buried their father. Are they brothers? Is this an encounter of brothers or enemies? And they buried their father Yitzchak in the cave of which is in Kerith Arabah, in Hebron. And they bury him with great honor as the funeral of a king. Now pay attention 
And Jacob and his sons and Esau and his sons and all the kings of Canaan made a great and heavy mourning and they buried him and mourned for him many days. And the death of Yishuk, he left his cattle. And after he died, listen to this. It says, and at the death of Yishuk, he left his cattle and his possession and all belonging to him, to his sons. And Esau said to Yaakov, this is what Esau said to Yaakov, Behold, I inquire, I pray you, all that our father has left, we will divide into two parts. Out of the same womb, two nations, two brothers. He said two parts, we shall divide it. He said, I will have the choice. And Yaakov said, we will do so. You see how Yaakov relented? You saw he gave because he had great riches, the blessings and the fulfillment of the promises were in Yaakov. Yeshua 46, 760. And Yaakov took all that Yishak had left in the land of Canaan, the cattle and the property and the place, them in two parts before es- Esau and his son. And he said to Esau, Behold, all this is before you. Choose you to yourself and have which you shall take. Now, do enemies do that or do brothers? This was his brother. And Yaakov said to Esau, Hear you, I pray you, what I will speak to you, saying, Yah, the Almighty of heavens and earth, spoke to our father Abraham Yitzchok, saying, To your seed will I give the land for an inheritance forever. Now, therefore, all that our father has left is before you. And before whole, all the land that is before you, choose you from them what you desire. You're the eldest, whatever you want. If you desire the whole land, take it for you and your children forever. And I will take this riches, and it's and it you if it you desire if you desire the riches, take you it. And I will take this land for me and for my children to inherit forever. And Nebeuth, the son of Ishmael, we know the story of Ishmael. He is not out of Yitzhak and Yaakov. So there are no blessings to those that say that they have identity with Avraham. It must be out of Yitzhak and Yaakov was then in the land with his children. And Esau went on that day and consulted with him, saying, This is what Yaakov spoke to me. And thus he answered me, Now give me your advice. We will hear. And uh, Nebahuth said, What is this that Yaakov has spoken to you? Behold, the children of Canaan are dwellers in securely, in the securely land. And Yaakov says, he will inherit it with his seed all the days. Go now therefore and take all your father's riches and leave Yaakov. Look at what this fool said. He said, Yaakov, your brother in the land, as he has spoken. And Esau went, rose up and returned unto Yaakov and did all that Nebeuth, the son of Ishmael, had advised. And Esau took all the riches that Yishok had left, and the nephesh, all the servants, all the people, the cattle, and the properties. So I ask you a question, if he took all the nephesh, or it says here all the souls, were these Hebrews, or were these uh, sons of Esau that served Yaakov? Was this of the lineage of Yaakov? He took all. He took the nephesh, or the beast, the cattle, the property, and the riches. He gave nothing, it says, to his brother, Yaakov. And Yaakov took the land of Canaan. Now listen to this. This is the land here of our promise. He says, from the brook of Egypt to the rivers of the great Euphrates. And he took it for an everlasting possession 
and for the children for his seed after him. I ask you the question, my friend. Did those nephesh or the souls of those that Esau took were any Hebrews? Did they marry in to the lineage of Esau? Did they? We must answer the question. We must answer it by preponderance of the evidence of Torah. I ask you, my friend, did Yah say anywhere in all of this writing, do brothers treat one another like just what happened here with Yasha with Esau and Yaakov? Are there two nations? Is Yisraya a two nation people? So is Esau annulled from being the brother Yaakov? Or is Ephraim and uh, Yehuda? There's no brother love there. We must be wise, Yisraya. I want you to ponder this teaching and go over it. Re-examine everything. Find the errors, if there be errors. Point them out. You cannot do that. Out of the same womb, two nations, two people, separate, are they brothers? It must be answered from Torah. May Yah bless you. May he cause your heart to delight in the simple teaching and may it be a great enriching to you as you continue the course to find out the great riches of Yah in your Yahshua with great wisdom of Torah delight. Yah barak you in Yahshua's name. Shalom.